One of the first things I'm going to do is uh, a lot of people have had problems getting going on the collabs from the get-go. So they didn't know about the drive, they didn't know about the collabs. So first thing you're going to do, very first, and I'm going to do this as basic as possible, is go to google.com slash drive, and you're going to get to this page. And here, you're going to go to go to drive. You click on that, and it's going to ask you to sign in for a Google account, which is your Gmail account. If you don't have one, then what you do is you create account. This is the way that you do it. So create account. For my own personal use, my child worker business, do it for my own personal use. You can put in your name and whatnot. So I'll start filling out this. I'll give it a password and then confirm. Then you'll put in your phone number. That's for personal security. It's not given out to anybody. That's if you lose your email or you lose your password, they're able to retrieve it or send you a text with it. They're going to ask you to verify your code that they send you, agree to their privacy and terms. So now it's going to tell you a few things about how to use that. It'll sign you into the Gmail Drive or the Google Drive. You can review all that. It's good information, good to have. That sets up your Google Drive. So now you have a Gmail account with a Google Drive. So anytime that you want to sign on, you will go to drive.google.com and put in your credentials. Next, you go to github.com slash the last bend slash fast hyphen stable hyphen diffusion. You're going to come to this page. Mind you, you're already set into your Gmail account. You haven't closed that. That window is still open. That's just on the other side. You have two different collabs that you can click on. One is for the automatic 1111 and one is for Dream Booth. Clicking on either one of them will get you to what you need. So we're going to go with automatic 1111. You can also see here, and this is important information, this tells you how recently it's been updated. Now, this was two days ago. The really cool thing about Automatic 111 and Dream Booth and so forth is that they update this all the time. So you frequently want to go and make sure that you have the latest version. So when I do this, I'm going to click Automatic 1111. That's all. Just go to it, click it. It's going to open up the Colab for it. Up here in this corner, it says Copy to Drive. Because you're logged into your Gmail account, your Google Drive account, that's already going in the other tab, you just click Copy to Drive, and it's going to copy this Colab into your Google Drive. So right here, I can close out the original one here that I clicked Copy to Drive. Okay, so that's this one. It says Copy to Drive. I'm going to close this window out because the one that came up was the one that was copied, and this is now operating from my Google Drive. So when I go to my Google Drive, you'll see a new folder, and the folder has a title called Colab Notebooks. That is now populated in your Google Drive. You have 15 gigabytes of data, storage space. You can buy more. It's cheap. Later on, when you start adding a whole bunch of models and things like that to it, video, whatever else, it may be something to look at. So if we double click the Colab, you'll see that this is the copy of Fast Stable Diffusion, but this tab is basically this file. So it's right here is your tracking for it on your drive, Colab Notebooks, and that's the one that's in there currently. We can switch it out so that you're seeing it by files, which I tend to like to do. It gives you more information as far as file size, full name, and that sort of thing. If I were to have this closed out for some reason, I just open up my Gmail account, my Google Drive account, okay, at drive.google.com, make sure that I'm signed in, and then I will simply go to my drive, Google uh, Colab Notebooks. That one will be right there. You just double click it and it will open up the Colab. That's the most basic way to get your Colab and to start getting it working. So as long as you have your Gmail account with your Google Drive open and running, and this is all in the Chrome browser, by the way, I'm using it because it's Gmail. It tends to work more efficiently. It tends to work more reliably and consistently when I use the Chrome browser. What you want to do first is check your runtime. You make sure that you're running and trying to connect to a GPU. Make sure that's the hardware accelerator. Everything is set to standard and so forth. This particular thing, as is GPU, that means when you try to connect to this, it's going to try and connect to a GPU. And just click Save. And then all you do is you go sequentially, 
clicking down this line, all of the arrows basically that show up. The first one is going to just log into your Gmail drive. You make sure that you're not a robot. Okay, looks good. Now it knows I'm not a robot. This is why every once in a while you have to come back to this page just to check. It's going to ask you if you want to connect to the Google Drive, opens it up, asks for you to click on which account. You do that, you click allow, then it's going to connect to your Google Drive so that files you save and so forth out of this particular collab will be saved on your Gmail Drive account. You can click over here on this folder. Once that's already done, it shows a green check mark, and that will then open up to where you can see your G Drive, which is your Google Drive, and you can scroll down through it by just using the drop down menus. When I'm working on this, what I do is in my drive here, I create a new folder and I will do models. So now I have a folder called models that I'll double click into. And then I will drag from my computer's hard drive, personal hard drive, into this folder, all of the models that I download from Civitai or wherever else I happen to get them from. I will drag and drop them into here. And it takes a while. It'll show them loading up on the side. And those will be accessed through here. So I may have to refresh this. There we go. Models now shows up. That means in this particular location, I can copy the path. So basically it's the three dots here at the edge. Copy path. Once I have my models loaded and I want it to use those models specifically, I will copy and paste that directory right there. So now I can actually take files from my Google Drive, copy and paste them by just using this little duplicate. It's a drop down menu and it's a duplicate of what is here on my drive and copy and paste that and place it where I need. This is already set up. I go to install the update, check the requirements. Each one of these will issue a check mark when it's done. One of the recent within the last few weeks is they also add a nice green thing saying it's done. It'll load requirements and so forth. And what that tends to do is it puts information here on the side. If I don't have anything in my models folder right now, and I do need to run something, I will run this here. I will leave it all empty and I will have it run off of model 1.5 or 2.1 or whatever it is I happen to be using. Then I will scroll down. There is also a link here so that if you wanted to run it from some other site or if you wanted to run just safe tensor, safe tensors are a version of the CKPT file or checkpoint files that are harder to inject viruses and so forth into. So it's a safer version of using a CKPT file. So you can use safe tensors in here because automatic 1111 does use safe tensor files. And Civitai, I'll put a link for Civitai also, C-I-V-T-A-I, I believe, which has tons of different models in there. So what it's doing is it's downloading the file right now. If you can take a look over here on the side, Stable Diffusion 1.5, that's what it's downloading. It has checked it, it's in there, done. Then I go here at the bottom part, stable diffusion. I am not going to be using the local tunnel, meaning I'm not going to be using it off of my own drive or my own setup for a server. I'm going to be using theirs. I'll just include some sort of red button and then just give it some random password. And then I'm going to click this. That means it's going to set up a public server. It's a random number, so it's not easily guessed but it'll also use user and password. And I did something completely random here, so it's not something I use. And I will just click the arrow again. All of these sequentially have been clicked. Over here in this area, you can check to see the RAM, the disk use, and so forth, because that will fill up as it processes this. You can also check for other information that's always there. We won't go over that right now, but it's one way to disconnect and delete the runtime. You can also manage the session and terminate it. So when you're done, basically be polite because they're offering this free. And if you're not using it, don't stay online if you have no need to. Just disconnect from the server. So it puts up here at the bottom a link. It's a Gradio link. So it's a random generated link. It will use the data that you put in. Red button and T. Again, just a random thing I'm throwing in. And boom, you're in automatic 11.11. This is where you would put all your other models. So if I went through here and copy and pasted my model designation like that, all of the models that would be in this folder would show up here. I'd be able to pull down an entire list and choose at will 
which model I want to run Stable Diffusion. I hope that helps people who have had a difficult time trying to figure out just how to use a Colab. If they didn't have a Gmail account and things like that, if you have any other questions, please put that in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up, at least. I would really appreciate that. And subscribe if you enjoy this type of content and want that delivered, or at least notified uh, that I have new content coming. Thank you very much.